explosions to have uh, physically interacting particles. Uh, we're also looking at fluid effects, seeing where we can pose, you know, use those. Gee, yeah, blood spurt sound like they might be a good candidate. Uh, I love other special effects like that, um, where they don't affect the core gameplay, so that players with the physics hardware and players without the physics hardware can all play together and, you know, without any restrictions. And um, should I, there was a lot of controversy with the recently released Ghost Recon where some players got very low performance or lower performance when enabling edgy effects because of, you know, the video card has to render more objects and things of that nature. Should, is that something that should be expected or should frame it be kind of the same? Yeah, so for the record, uh, acceleration hardware is supposed to accelerate your frame rate and not decrease it. <laughs> uh, that seems like it's just a, a messy trade-off that they made there. Uh, you'd certainly want the physics hardware to improve your frame rate. That means that you know, the physics hardware might in some cases be able to update more objects so you can actually render in a frame, so you need to have some kind of rendering LED scheme for that in order to manage the object counts. And obviously you don't want to take this ultra-fast high-end physics hardware and plug it into a machine with a crummy video card. You really want to have a you know, great video card matched up with your physics hardware and also a decent CPU to have your system in balance to really be able to take advantage of the full thing. And how about a GFX over a, a network? Is that is it supported or is it client client side? Because I imagine that uh, trying to push you know a lot of physics data through the network, there would be kind of a bottleneck. There are a number of physics space. Uh, networking solutions for physics. Uh, what we're doing in Unreal Tournament 2007 is using the physics uh, hardware only for accelerating special effects objects. You have things where the client, the server tells the client, spawn this special effect here. The client spawns an explosion with, you know, thousands of particles, and each of those goes off and operates as a separate physics object, but it doesn't affect the gameplay, so that it's uh, just purely a visual effect there. That's the easiest and most common solution. Um, some of the other solutions that it looks like other teams are using are uh, you know, only enabling the physics hardware is networking on a LAN environment where the entire physics state of the entire world is being replicated to all the clients. Uh, that requires a vast amount of bandwidth, more than even the broadband connection has there, so that's not practical. Uh, the other approach is to run a peer-to-peer -peer lockstep game, which would be ideal for like a fighting game or some other game with two, you know, two players or four players playing against each other, where it, the entire game runs in lockstep, everybody has hardware, and you know, the entire game state evolves deterministically on all of the machines. Okay, and um, Havoc recently announced uh, the ability to accelerate physics on the GPU. Is that necessarily a, a bad idea? Uh, that's a good approach. Uh, they have some cool technology there. Uh, you have it has a physics solver that runs largely on the GPU to, to accelerate the computations there. It seems to be a lower precision physics solver than you have for the rest of the game, which is problematic. Uh, yeah, you really want all the physics in the entire world to be running with a constant level of precision so you don't have to make weird trade-offs there. I guess there's also the trade-off with that, that you know, if your GPU is doing both physics and graphics, then you're not getting you know, full utilization out of the system. And um, have you guys ever considered the possibility of maybe allowing like console players to play against PC players in Unreal 2007, or is it uh, too difficult to, to balance the, the different players? Oh, so the question of PC players playing against console players or even console players on PlayStation 3 playing against Xbox 360 is a, really more of a gameplay question than a technical one because right now we do support running a PC server, having PC clients join and play it alongside PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 clients uh, you know, in our game's networking framework. So that basic approach works, but um, on the Xbox 360 side, Microsoft has chosen to you know keep the network completely closed so that you can't have PC players playing on Xbox Live now. Uh, kind of an unfortunate decision, but it makes it enables them to really secure their network and control it carefully, uh, which you kind of want in a console environment. On PlayStation 3, we might actually enable that uh, if we can. If we end up when we get down to balancing the game to really play well on a controller. If it turns out that we don't have to change the gameplay roles significantly in order to do that, then we'll enable PC players and PlayStation 3 players to play together. And we're really looking forward to that. We really like the idea a lot. And it looks like Sony will be supportive of the whole open networking approach. Okay. Um, it seems like NVIDIA and ATR are, are both looking at unified shader architectures where you have separate pixel and vertex. Is that, um, do you think that's beneficial to uh, gaming uh, on a graphical level? 
Right, having one unified shading architecture enables you to you know, do dynamic load balancing. Some scenes have an enormous number of pixels with a small number of triangles or vertices. Some have a huge amount of geometry with simple pixel shaders. You really want to have all of the computing power and the chip utilized all of the time, and that means being able to shift the resources around between any potential use, pixels, vertices, or even you know just general computation that you're happening to do on the GPU. So I think this is just the very beginning of a long-term trend in which GPUs will become more and more generalized and eventually will turn into you know, full CPU-like computing devices. Obviously, the problem that GPUs are optimized to solve will be a, always be a very different problem than CPUs, but they'll, they'll certainly become more and more general purpose to the point where you could actually write a C program and compile it for your GPU in the future. Okay, this isn't really an Unreal Tournament 2007 question. This is more an Unreal Engine 3 question. Um, it, do you guys have any plans for adding DirectX 10 type features into uh, future versions of Unreal Engine 3? Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll have some full support for DirectX 10. We'll use their uh, geometry shader stuff to, to accelerate shadow generation and some other techniques in the engine. We'll be using virtual texturing. Yeah, with the with both Unreal Tournament and Gears of War, we're authoring all of our textures at extremely high resolution, like 2000 by 2000 resolution, which is a higher resolution than you can actually effectively use on a console just because of the limited memory. But it's something that will certainly be appropriate for PCs with you know, virtualized texturing in the future. So we'll be, be wholeheartedly supporting DirectX 10. Uh, it's hard to say what the time frame will be on that uh, because Vista could ship this year or next year or what, whatever, uh, but we'll certainly be supporting it really well when it comes along. And um, te 10 years from now, do you, do you vis vision that we will see GPUs handling graphics, physics cards handling physics, CPU, doing AI and that kind of thing? Or do you think we'll see some kind of blend of all the three technologies or maybe two of them? Right. For looking at the long-term future, the next 10 years or so, my hope and expectation is that there will be a, a real convergence between the CPU, GPU, and non-traditional architectures like the physics chip from Aegea, the cell technology from Sony. You really want all of those to evolve in, more in the direction of a, a multi-core, a large-scale multi-core CPU that has a lot of non-traditional computing power as a GPU has now. And GPUs process a huge number of pixels in parallel using relatively simple control flow. CPUs are extremely good at random access logic, lots of branching, you know, handling cache misses and things like that. I think, really, essentially, graphics and computing need to evolve together to the point where the future renders, I, I hope and expect, will look a lot more like a software renderer from previous generations than a, a fixed function hardware rasterizer pipeline and all that stuff that we have currently. Uh, I think, ultimately, GPUs will end up being, you know, when we look at this 10 years from now, we'll look back at GPUs as being kind of a temporary fixed function hardware solution to a problem that really ultimately just was general computing. Uh, this is not really related to Unreal Tourn Tournament 2007 or really Unreal Engine 3, but um, I'm sure you've heard John Carmack talking a lot about mega texturing and how he uses it. I just wonder what your thoughts on mega texturing wor was. So, mega texturing is this idea of applying absolutely unique textures to every object in your environment everywhere. Um, it looks a uh, Computationally, it looks kind of difficult because our resolutions are always going up at a steady rate. Uh, the amount of detail in our environments is increasing, and the size of our environments is increasing. And uh, this, I mean, to me, implies that you want to be able to reuse your content very frequently. You want to be able to build a mesh in one place and reuse it in hundreds of places of your environment, just with you know, minor modifications here and there. So if you're going to move in a mega texturing direction, I think you really have to look at that in the context of a larger you know, material system that lets you instance objects and share assets and not duplicate and not have an explosion in the amount of content creation work that's required because if an artist has to sit down and paint every little detail in every object in the world and that's going to be a really intractable and uneconomical approach to game development. So, so in order for mega tech hearing to really work on our large scale I think you need excellent tools for being able to you know, reuse instance and, and reuse all of this data so that you know you save the artist's time and they don't have to rebuild custom things all over the place. Okay, just a few more questions here, um, kind of in tradition of last year. Uh, R600 or G80? <laughs> wow, uh, at Epic we're mostly using the you know NVIDIA GeForce 7800 and 7900 cards. Uh, we have a few ATI cards; they perform really well, and uh, you know we're really happy with the solutions from both companies. Okay, and one more question, kind of in the same fashion: um, Conroe AM2. <laughs> 
Oh, that's hard to say. I don't know much about AM2. Uh, Conroe is a really fantastic chip. Uh, I mean, the funny thing is very few people in the industry have you know, been willing to come out and say that the Pentium 4 architecture sucks. It, it sucked all along. It, you know, even at the height of its sucking, it running, was running at 3.6 gigahertz and not performing as well as a 2 gigahertz Athlon 64. People were reluctant to say it sucked, but it sucks. <laughs> uh, but Conroe really makes up for that, and uh, I'm very happy to see that. The Intel is back on this track of delivering extremely high computing performance at uh, you know reasonable clock rates, not having to scale up uh, you know, to these extremely hot-running systems that require a lot of cooling. I think they're on a good track there, and if they scale the Conroe architecture up to two, then you know, they already have two cores. If they scale it up to four and eight cores in the future, then they'll put the industry on a really good track for improving performance dramatically at a faster rate than we've improved it in the, in the past few years. All right, well, that's all I have. I want to thank you very much, Tim Sweeney, for answering my questions. This is Jacob from MV News.